All right, I want to talk about derivatives and graphs. All right, um, the basic idea is if you know what the graph of a function looks like, then can you draw a graph of the derivative? Let's, let's see. You know, here's some, um, how about uh, the old y equals x squared? Everybody's favorite example. Um, first of all, let's remember what the derivative is supposed to represent. The derivative at any point tells you the slope at that point. And I'm, in fact, you know, if f of x equal x squared, we already know, because we did this last time, f prime of x equals 2x. That was kind of a lengthy uh, computation, but it turned out this was the answer. What that means is the slope, whenever you plug in certain point x, the slope at that point is equal to 2x. So for instance, if you plug in, say, x equal 2, the slope right here will be 4, right? x equal 3, the slope right here will be 6. All right, these are the slopes that I'm drawing. What about back here? x equal negative 1, say, the slope will be 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. Back here, negative 2, the slope will be negative 4, right? Each time you multiply the x by 2, you get the slope at that point. These ones are positive. Remember, positive slope means going up as you go to the right. Negative slope means going down as you go to the right. Uh, and, the, you know, the formula seems to uh, be pretty good. What, what's the slope right here? <laughs> Well, that would be x equals 0. You go 2 times 0, which is 0. Slope is 0. And it looks like slope 0 on the curve, right? Uh, slope 0 means straight up, flat, horizontal. Okay, so these are the slopes on the curve. Um, simple example, right? Uh, let's, let's look at something a little more complicated. Okay, here's a function, f of x. I'm not going to give you an equation for this. This is just uh, some, some curve that I drew. You can still answer some questions about the derivative, though. Here's a question. Um, where is f prime of x equal to 0? I would like to know where are the x values when the derivative is 0. Remember, the derivative is the same as the slope. So really, I'm asking you here, where is the slope? zero for this graph and what we just said was slope zero means the uh the thing is straight up horizontal all right i can see two such points they would be here and here right there are two points that i can see where the slope is zero that is the slope of the tangent line to the graph is horizontal okay so the answer when i ask you where is typically i'm looking for x value so my answer is f prime of x equals 0 when, in this example, x equal 2, that's right here, has x value 2. I don't know what the y value is, but I don't care. I'm, uh, I want to just know what the x value is. And x equals 0, right here. There you go. All right. Where is the derivative 0? That's where. Okay. How about this? Where is the derivative positive? Where is the derivative negative? You can answer those questions also. You just have to remember positive derivative means positive slope. Positive slope means it's going up as you go to the right. So you can look throughout this picture here. There are certain regions where the slope is going up as you go to the right. There are certain regions where the slope is going down. Those would be where the slope is positive versus negative. So if I asked you, give intervals where f prime of x is positive or negative. All right? So give me an interval where the slope is, let's do negative first. f prime of x is negative on the interval. You got to look here and ask yourself, where are the slopes negative? That is going down as you go to the right. I believe that would be right in the middle there, right? This region right here, the slopes are negative, all right? These other two regions, the slopes are positive. It's positive, it's positive. Look at those colors. Anyway, this is the negative region. Tell me the interval, all right? Um, as an interval of x values, this is the interval from 0 to 2, all right? From x equals 0 over to x equals 2. Again, I'm not talking about the y values here. I'm talking about the x values. It is negative on the interval from x equals 0 to x equals 2. On the interval, 0 to 2. All right. This is an interval here. This means all x values greater than 0 but less than 2, not including 0 or 2, because um, 0 and 2, it actually equals 0 at those two points. All right. What about uh, positive? 
f prime of x is positive. Would you mind if I write that? f prime of x greater than zero. It's the same as saying positive. On the interval, actually in this case, there's two intervals, right? There's this one over here and this one back here. Um, this one for the x values would be from two all the way out, everything greater than two. That The way we write that is two to infinity. And the other interval is back here, zero and everything less. That would be minus infinity to zero, right? All right, here's another kind of problem. Similar uh, setup, but it's a different, a more complicated question. Um, I'm going to draw a graph. I want you to draw the derivative. So here is my first. How about that? Can we see that all right? It's a marker. Okay, this is f of x. Your job, sketch the graph of f prime of x. What do you think about that? All right. So this one um, is a little a little strange, I suppose, but here's how you think of it. First, you should look at this graph and try to identify the points where the derivative is zero. Then try to figure out where is the derivative positive, where is the derivative negative. That's just like we did before. So where is it zero? The derivative equals zero everywhere that the tangent line has a, f a flat horizontal slope. That would be here, here, and also in here, there's a point where it becomes flat there, all right? So these are the places where the derivative is zero, all right? Where is it positive? Where is it negative? The derivative is, well, what about in here? Basically, you just have to look from each of these dots to the next one. It's going to be, that's where it's zero. In between the zeros, it's either going to be positive or negative. So along here, it's positive slope, right? Along here, it's negative. Along here, it's positive. Remember, positive means going up as you go to the right. And negative means going down. So this is pretty, no tricks, right? It's just, is it going up or is it going down, all right? Now, actually, you have at this point enough information to draw a pretty decent picture of the derivative. So I'm going to put it right right underneath it's easiest to do it that way so this is going to be a picture of f prime of x all right what does this stuff mean up here well these dots are where the derivative equals zero so the derivative right here is going to be zero right here the derivative is zero right here the derivative is zero right whatever the curve is going to look like the y values which represent the derivative has to be zero here here and here all right Okay, what else does the curve look like? Well, these sort of in-between regions will tell you, you know, between two zeros, this curve, the derivative, it's got to connect these dots somehow, and it's not going to be zero anywhere else in between. So either this curve has to go, you know, it either does that or it does that, right? Because it has to connect these two dots, and it's not supposed to be zero anywhere else because we know it's not zero. You know, these dots are where it's zero, okay? The question is, is it going to be that or is it going to be that? Should I make the y values, um, which represent the derivative, up here or down here? Really what I'm asking is, is the derivative positive, which would, in which case you would draw that one? Or is it negative, in which case you would draw that one? Positive meaning up here in the y-axis, positive. Negative meaning down here. And the answer is, the derivative is negative here. So it should go down like that. So not this one. Come on now. Yes to this one. So the derivative looks something like that. Okay, what about this part here? Well, I want to know, does it go up there? Meaning, is it in the positive side? Or does it go down here? Meaning, is it on the negative side? Well, is the derivative positive or negative? It's positive. So right here, i got to draw the curve being up here in the positive bit rather than down here. All right, and then again, up here. The derivative is positive, which means from this point and continuing onward, it should be, should it be up here. Or down here the answer is up here because the derivative is positive so I'm going to draw the thing on the positive side all right and uh, let's just finish it off here over here to the left of this point should I be drawing something up here positive or down here negative the answer is positive so like so all right that's how we do it did, by the way did you see what just happened during that edit I got a haircut I also got a new microphone this is a Barbie microphone rocking it and I got a new video camera too. I hope you uh, hope you like the quality. All right. Anyway, this is how you uh, this is how you do that. All right. Let's get back to equations. Finding the derivative, looking at equations. It turns out there's actually some really uh, nice patterns which let you do a lot of these derivatives 
um, really easily. So I want to talk about some specific types of functions. First of all, let's look at the derivative of a constant. By constant, I mean a function like f of x equals c, where no matter what you plug in, you always get the same answer, like 2 or something like that. c is a number, okay? What is the derivative of that? Well, you do the thing, right? It's the limit h goes to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x over h, okay? Um, what do you get? We're going to plug into the function here. c is just some number, right? Remember what I said? What this means is no matter what you plug in, you always get c for the answer. So this is limit, h goes to 0. OK, uh, f of x is just c, right? So that's going to be c there. What is f of x plus h? This is a, maybe a little counterintuitive, but remember what I said. No matter what you plug in, you always get c. So what do you get if you plug in x plus h? You get c, because no matter what you plug in, you get c. All right. So f of x plus h is c. Down here you get h. Can you simplify? Yeah, what's that on the top? c minus c is 0, so this is limit h goes to 0, 0 over h, but 0 over h is just 0 because 0 divided by anything is 0. So this is limit h goes to 0 of 0, and that there is no h anymore. It's just 0, right? The answer is 0. Okay, so the derivative of a constant, if f of x equals c, then f prime of x equals 0. The derivative of any constant function is 0. Memorize that, right? Not too hard to remember. All right, let's try another simple function. How about f of x equal x? All right, this is another very simple kind of function. Let's do it. Okay, plug everything in. What is f of x plus h now? Well, x plus h, you, re you go up here, remember how to plug in, you replace x by x plus h. Everywhere you see x, you say x plus h, so answer is x plus h, right? And then minus f of x, f of x equal x, so that's x, divided by uh, h, like before. Okay, cancel out what you can. I believe you can cancel the x's, right? And what remains is just limit h goes to 0, h over h, and so you get 1, okay? So if f of x equal x, then f prime of x equals 1. The derivative of x is 1. One. All right. Let's talk about other powers of x. Here's another one that we already have done. The derivative f of x equal x squared. The derivative of that uh, was 2x. We did that last time, I don't, I don't know, a couple times ago. Um, let's try one more, x cubed. If f of x equal x cubed, what is the derivative? Ooh, well, let, let's just try it. Same process. Okay, f of x equal x cubed. What's the derivative of x cubed? Well, we just got to work it out. So it's limit h goes to 0. Uh -huh, x plus eight. Oh, come on now. Minus f of x. Divided by h. Same thing, right? We're going to do x cubed. So it's what is f of x plus h? You replace x by x plus h. It's like that, see? Minus x cubed, right? Over h. And what do you do for this? This is just, you know, look back when we did x squared. It's the same kind of a thing, only here you have cubing instead of squaring. you got to do the foil here three times, right? you got to do x plus h times x plus h times x plus h. This is a real pain to do. You do a bunch of garbage to expand this, all right? I happen to be a master of um, doing the foil. It turns out when you do this, what you're going to get is x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. Actually, there's sort of a trick for doing these things. Look up uh, Pascal's triangle if you're interested. But we're not really going to have to do this a whole lot, so it's not a big deal. You just take my word for it. That's what you get when you expand that. All right, then the minus x cubed from before. Again, division by h. Okay, see what you can cancel. You can cancel x cubed, x cubed, and that's it, right? These guys... Uh, don't combine. You cannot combine these two. They're not exactly the same. The squaring is on the different thing. So this is 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed over h. 
What are we going to do next to simplify? We're going to do this, the thing that we always do in this situation, which is factor out the H on the top. Let's do it. Okay, I just factored the H up in here. And now, uh, why did we factor the H? Because you can cancel the H's now. So you go, cancel, cancel. And we get limit H goes to 0, 3x squared plus 3xH plus H squared. You don't need the fraction anymore because it canceled the whole denominator, all right? Now you take the limit by plugging in H equals 0, and you get 3x squared plus 3x times 0 plus 0 squared. That's 0 because you multiply by 0. That's 0 because 0 squared is 0. So your whole answer is 3x squared. All right, so what we just said was if f of x is x cubed, then f prime of x is 3x squared. All right? These are some simple functions. What about higher powers of x? Uh, actually, there's a pattern here. I don't know if you uh, noticed, but there is a pattern here. All right, derivatives of powers of x. We did several examples. There is a pattern, actually. Um, I'm going to... Actually, before we talk about the pattern, here's just a notation. So d over dx, this means the derivative of, right, whatever you put after it. So this is an operation for the derivative, just because it's, it's kind of a clunky to write, you know, f of x equal x cubed, and then the derivative f prime of x equals x squared, right? That's that's the example we just did. I would rather not have to write it sort of in two steps here. Here's the function, here's the derivative. So this is the way we're going to write it. This means exactly the same thing. d dx, which means the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. All nice, you know, one nice notation that says the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. All right. Anyway, let's, uh, let's do uh, powers of x, all the different powers of x. All right, we just did all of these in examples. First of all, the derivative of uh, x to the 0, that's the, the sort of 0 power of x. Well, uh, remember, anything to the 0 power equals 1, right? So this is the same as the derivative of a 1. 1 being a constant, the derivative of a constant is 0. That was one of the examples we just did. All right, what about the derivative of x to the 1 power? That's just x. Uh, and the derivative of x, this was also an example we just did, is 1. How about x squared? The derivative of x squared is 2x, and the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. Do you think you see a pattern in this one? Can you guess what is the derivative of x to the 4? Think about it. Here's the answer. It's 4x cubed. Is that what you thought I was going to say? Uh, the pattern is you take the power here, that turns into a new coefficient, and then you have the x to some power, and the exponent in the x decreases by 1. You can actually write this in general terms, and this has a name. You're going to do this millions of times, so you absolutely need to have this memorized. It's not a big deal. You're going to do it so often, you're going to naturally just remember this. But it says the derivative of x to the n is n times x to the n minus 1, right? That's exactly what I just said. You take the old exponent, and that becomes the new coefficient. And then the new exponent, you subtract 1 from the old exponent, and that's how you get the new one, all right? This is called the power rule, all right? It's actually, I don't know if this seems awesome to you. It's pretty awesome, though, because actually computing these derivatives by hand is a real pain. Remember for this one, this one is not so bad. This one you had to do the foil with three parts, which is a bit of a pain. This one you have to do with four parts, which is even worse. The higher ones, you would never actually want to carry out those computations by hand, but it turns out you can do them all very simply using uh, the power rule. All right, so derivative of a power of x is actually really easy, even though it seems kind of hard from the definition. It's really easy if you do it with the power rule, all right?